Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make husband videos here on Good and Plenty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Today I want to talk all about snake plants. That's gonna include things from water, light, humidity, temperature, fertilizer, soil, all of that stuff so that you can take the best care of your snake plant. I am sure that you are familiar with snake plants and the the fact that they are often marketed as impossible to kill and super easy beginner plants. But as someone who has killed a snake plant, yes, I have killed a snake plant, I think that there are areas of their care that are often misunderstood. So I just want to share all the information that I have kind of gathered over my time of taking care of snake plants. I'm going to pop up some time codes on the screen so that you can jump to the area that most interests you if you have a specific question. And as always, all of the products that I mentioned throughout the video will be linked in the description box down below. Now, elephant in the room, I know I have to address this because I will get a comment if I do not. I know that Santaveria has been reclassified into the genus Dracaena. That study and all of the information supporting that is way above my head. So if you want to learn more about that reclassification, I definitely recommend watching Summer Rain Oaks's videos on this. I will link it down below. Yeah, for the purpose of this video, for the purpose of being YouTube search friendly, I'm going to be referring to them as Sansevieria, but I am aware of that name change. One thing that I really like about the snake plant is that they live a really long time and they are super common and fairly easy to take care of. So I feel like there are a lot of stories of people who have had snake plants for a majority of their life. So if you are one of those people who have had their snake plant for like their whole life, please comment them down below. I am so excited to carry these snake plants with me, hopefully, for years and years and years um, and have them for like decades. Now, let's jump into the care of snake plants and I want to kick things off with water. I know you know, but I just have to say it. Do not overwater this plant. It will rot on you. It is always, always better to underwater these plants than overwater these plants. I usually do not water any of my snake plants until my moisture meter reads a one, which is pretty dramatic, but I really don't want to overwater these plants. If you don't have a moisture meter, some visual cues you can use to tell if your snake plant is thirsty is obviously dry soil that is dry to the touch. The leaves will start getting a little bit like floppy and bendy. And if you look close, you'll probably see some wrinkles on the leaves because it's kind of like dehydrated and running out of water. Oh my God, there's this huge fly in my room. Oh my God. Your exact watering schedule will most likely fluctuate and it will depend on a lot of factors like pot size, pot type, soil mixture, lighting, all of that stuff. So it's really hard for me to tell you whether or not you should water your snake plant like once a week versus once every two months. The reason that people really stress not to overwater your snake plant is because the leaves are super succulent and waxy and retain a lot of moisture. And then on top of that, their root system usually isn't super thick. So if you overwater this plant, odds are the roots are gonna sit in really damp soil, the leaves are not gonna be able to hold much more water, and then you're just gonna have root rot on your hands. Some signs of root rot are yellowing leaves that are probably mushy because they're rotting, soil that is not drying out fast enough. Again, that's kind of hard for me to tell you, you know, what time range you should be waiting for the soil to dry out, but as just like a rough estimate, I would say that I water this four inch pot in super airy soil um, about once every two weeks or so. If you are underwatering your plant, which can happen with snake plants, you'll notice that the edges of the leaves are starting to get dehydrated and crisp up. I have a really helpful video on this. I actually let my this snake plant actually dry out way too much to the brink of death and I brought her back. So if you want a really good visual on a super, super dehydrated snake plant, I'm going to recommend watching that video. If you leave your plant dry for an excessive amount of time, the roots are going to dry out, shrivel up, break off. And then once you go to water the pot, um, they won't be able to suck up enough water and then they're just gonna be sitting in damp soil, which has, 
you know, causes root rot. So it is important to let your pot dry out, but don't fully abandon it. Do give it water once it is bone dry. And that holds true mostly for spring and summer. During the winter, I kind of find that watering goes down a lot and the pot does take longer to dry out. Light, this area of snake plant care is super misunderstood in my opinion because these plants have really, really been marketed as low light loving plants when they are low light tolerant at best. The key I think to having a really happy snake plant is to actually put it in bright and direct light just like all of your other house plants. They can survive, survive in low light conditions if you want to just put like a filler plant in that area and you don't really care how the growth is going. But if you want to see where snake plant actually grow and thrive and last a long time, then you definitely need bright and direct light. And I will say that varieties with more variegation and color will need more light than a little bit more of like the plain green snake plants. Those can tolerate low light a little bit better. Soil and repotting. These plants really appreciate a chunky, airy soil mixture for reasons that relate back to the watering section. Thin roots like these do not want to sit in water. The goal of your soil mixture, whether you are buying it from the store or making it at home yourself, should be to retain enough water so that your snake plant actually has something to absorb. But at the same time, you want to make sure that it has enough drainage so that the roots are not sitting in damp soil for an excess amount of time. I have an entire video on my soil mixture that I make at home that I will link up above and down below. Also, I will link the video that I made to amending store-bought soil so that it is more friendly for your houseplant. I use the same mixture that I use for the rest of my houseplants for the snake plant. When repotting snake plants, I do really like to stick with super super porous pots like terracotta, for example. Nursery pots are pretty common and doable, but if you stick with your nursery pot, definitely pay closer attention to the moisture levels and make sure that soil is drying out. Definitely be modest with your pot size because you, again, you don't want to overwhelm that thinner root system with too much soil because the water is just going to sit in that soil. Roots aren't getting to the soil to drink up the water. So you are going to promote rot. I also recommend not potting your plant too deep into the soil because you don't want want the base of the plant and like where the leaf actually begins to start rotting. Uh, these plants obviously are very, very <laughs> susceptible to rot. So you just wanna take all of the precautions that you can so that your plant can stay healthy for longer. Humidity and temperature. As with a lot of tropical plants, if you're comfortable, your plants are comfortable. So in terms of temperature, that looks like 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. These plants are also super flexible in terms of humidity. Whatever you have will probably be just fine. Drier conditions are probably a little bit better for this plant just because then you are allowing the soil to dry out faster, but they can do with some humidity and they can do without. Fertilizer. Fertilizer I've found is not super necessary. I really don't keep these plants on a fertilizing schedule. Recently, I have mentioned that I switched to using Liquidur as my only fertilizer, even though it's a plant food, whatever. And I think that that works a little bit better for snake plants since they're a little bit more sensitive to fertilizing and don't really need it. A super gentle plant food like Liquidirt seems to be working well. My snake plants also get a lot of nutrients from the worm castings that I put in the soil. So they kind of get the nutrients they need and I don't need to give them that extra boost from something like Espoma. I will also link my fertilizing video that I made where I talk a little bit more in depth about the fertilizers that I have used and currently use. And at the end of the day, I would just say for snake plants, you can do a little bit of experimentation and see what works best for you and your snake plant. Okay, and let's wrap things up with propagation. I'm going to be talking about two different ways to propagate your snake plant. The first option... <laughs> The first option is going to be root division. And if you have seen my spider plant propagation video, you know why I'm laughing because after filming and editing that video, I kind of swore off root division. I don't want to talk about root division anymore, but I will make an exception for snake plants. Basically what root division is, if you don't know, is 
when you kind of break up a bigger plant like this, for example, you take one of the plants out of the big pot and you just repot it separately. So you're taking one established plant from, you know, a big pot to a little pot essentially. And it has a really high success rate because the plant is already established and has roots and is used to living in soil. Now, what happened with the spider plant is that spider plants have really thick and intense and dense <laughs> root systems. So when I went to try to separate the different plants in the same pot, I was just completely entangled in roots, in very thick and strong roots. But with snake plants, it is super, super easy to root divide them. This might vary here and there depending on how established your snake plant is. In that video that I mentioned earlier where I was repotting and rehabbing this plant from dehydration, I completely divided all of the different crowns in this pot with no problem. I would not swear off root dividing a snake plant. I think it is quite doable. Again, if you want a visual on what that looks like, I'm gonna plug that video because I don't have any snake plants that I think would do good with root division right now. Option number two is a very another very simple propagation method and that's going to be to propagate from cuttings for this method all you want to do is cut a leaf off you don't have to even go all the way to the base of the plant you can cut the leaf at any at any point honestly and then just let that wound uh heal heal callus over for maybe like an hour or two because you don't want to put the fresh wound in water and then promote rot. Do you see a common theme? So once your cutting is calloused over, just put it in a jar of water. I don't really like to submerge too much of the leaf in water. I probably only fill my containers up to like about an inch, maybe two tops, just so that that bottom piece is submerged in water. I will switch out that water about weekly and I will place that whole setup in bright and direct light so that it has some decent conditions to push out roots in. I will say this propagation method is pretty simple, but I have had a, I guess I would say low success rate with snake plant cuttings, especially compared to common plants like pothos. When I take snake plant cuttings, I usually expect for at least half of them to fail and they do take a long time to root in water. I know there's some hacks out there like putting a pothos cutting in with the propagation in the same container because there's some kind of like hormones or something that makes them root faster. I don't know, I've never tried it so I can't really talk about it. But in my experience, these are slow rooters and have a kind of a high fail rate. I have one snake plant that is I'm currently propagating and I'm just getting the smallest little root nubs coming out and it's been in that water since I recorded the rehab video. So how long is that? So it's been over a month and, and those are the results for me so far. But I actually propagated this plant before as well and eventually I got this so once the roots got to be a few inches long and I even had a pup coming out so this was a pup on this cutting I felt like it was pretty established enough to pot it up in some airy soil I kept it moist for I usually recommend like the first week or two when you're transferring a water prop to soil but with the snake plants, as we've talked about 50,000 times, I'm really cautious about overwatering this plant. So I really only keep it moist for like the first couple days. And then it just takes to the soil and you're fine and you have an established plant. Um, yeah, and that's all I have on propagations and snake plants in general. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something about snake plants and feel more confident taking care of yours at home. If you have any questions, please drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Please subscribe to my channel if you don't already and you wanna see more planty content from me like this video comment down below follow me on instagram check out my merch all that good stuff and i will see you in my next video bye